Hey, hey, hey. Hey, 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 hey. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. Oh, it's been a long week. Glad for Saturdays. <laughs> oh my goodness. Needed this break, this refresher to just gather my thoughts and get back to myself. All right, and do things that I like to do. So this morning, I will be talking about people pleasers. Where are all my people pleasers? I am a recovering people pleaser. I am a recovering people pleaser. What are, the, what are some signs that you may be a people pleaser? You pretend to like things that you don't like to make others happy. You never speak up about your feelings because you don't want to upset anyone. You hate it when someone is upset with you. You apologize over and over again, even if it's not your fault. You desperately want to be liked and it breaks your heart when someone doesn't like you. These are signs of a people pleaser. Okay. You try very hard to avoid conflict. You sacrifice your happiness for others. You are the only one who makes all the compromises in a relationships. In, a, in, in, in relationships. These are all signs of a people pleaser. Are we people pleasers? I have been. And it's just, it's draining t- trying to make everyone else happy. That's so draining. Because it's like, you cannot make people happy. That's a personal choice. That's a personal decision. So we have to check in. Why, why do I need them to, to like me? Why do I need them to accept me? Why do I need, like, just check in with yourself. Like, check in with you, all right? Because I want to share something with you. Um, And I think for a lot of women, I really want to talk to women. This is for everybody, but I really want to talk to women because we do this. We, we, are, we are big for this, right? <laughs> Good morning. Okay, unconditional love is often um, rooted in your greatest gift you can give another person and while it's a great and and while it is a great idea to achieve unconditional pride um it's the best gift a dad can give a daughter why because a father's pride is self-esteem injection for a girl straight into her heart and lack of self-esteem is the greatest challenge most women face in their lifetime it starts with it starts being built up or broken down when she is just a little girl. Good morning, Rachel. <laughs> and her daddy is her first hero, her protector. And the, and, the, and the main influence on how on how much of it she keeps and she develops into a woman. The self-esteem problem basically boils down to a feeling of not being good at uh, not uh, not good enough and feeling not good enough inside, which causes most women to search outside of themselves for external validation and worthiness. That habitual cycle leads to a variety of emotional coping mechanisms and unhealthy behaviors. The low self-esteem creates one or more of the five common problematic behavior patterns for women. So we have constant sacrificing. And really, I, I tie people pleasing in with constant sacrificing because some women don't even dare to have a dream Therefore, they struggle to find joy as they manage their to-do list and take care of everyone else but themselves. They've convinced their hearts that it's easier not to have desires than to have them and not be able to achieve them. So they constantly sacrifice their goals and dreams. People pleasing, okay? And the rest of them are constant sabotaging, constant settling, constant self-smothering, and constant suffering. We do this unconsciously and consciously, all right? So let me give you some help. God called us to serve people, not to please them, okay? God called us to serve people, not to please them. Stop moving without expectation, okay? People pleaser is a person who constantly strives to please others, often sacrificing their own wants and needs in the process. Uh, People, yeah, A people pleaser is a person who is committed to living empty while the unsatisfied live full. It's it's winning season, not proving season. Approval addiction is when the validation of others determines my value. That's approval addiction, right? 
when um when you got it you can't hide it and when you don't you can't show it okay what do you do when you're addicted and don't even know it what do you do when you're addicted and don't even know it now there are two types of people pleasers there are two types of people pleasers there's the insecure people pleaser that's they just want to be liked they 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 do things because they just want to be liked do you like me do you like me do you like me why don't you like me and then they try to make people like them. What do I need to do to make you like me? What do I need to do to make you like me? Right? Then you have the forced people pleaser. They don't want to be talked about. Well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this thing because I don't want them to talk about me. I'm going to say yes because I don't want them to talk about me. Good morning from Florida <laughs> and happy Saturday. When we are addicted to approval, we abandon our purpose in order to fulfill people's preference. Preference. When we're addicted to approval, we abandon our purpose in order to fulfill other people's preference. How do you know? How do you know when you're linked? Excuse me. How do we know we're linked if nobody ever pulls the chain? How do you know you're linked if nobody ever pulls the chain? My day one is a person who uh, your day one is a person who came into your life. And since then, Never change. And your day one doesn't have to be somebody you went to school with, somebody you've known all your life. There are people who have just come into my life and they have always been the same person. I, they are consistent. I don't have to prove anything. They accept me for me and I accept them for them. We have nothing to prove, nothing to hide, nothing to defend. I, I can share myself with them. I can share my ups and my downs and they don't, they don't talk down on me. They don't talk about me. They don't beat me down. Right? It's important to have those day ones. Okay, my the fruit may be um may be achieving and the root may be approval. The fruit may be achieving and the root may be approval. Addiction approval. When the validation of others determine your value. Good morning, sister. <laughs> Purpose is original att- intent. Preference is man's manipulation. External addi- addiction is rooted in, in internal addiction. The heart and the mindset. You can live your life in three ways. These glasses keep falling. Let me take them off. Anyway, (laughs) you can live your life in three ways. Abundance, average, or addicted. You can live your life in three ways. Abundant, average, or addicted. Addiction is a form of hiding. Whoever you need to prove something to is, is who you can expect provision from. Whoever you need to prove something to is who you can expect provision from. And you should not, you should not try to prove nothing to anybody else. Only God. That's it. All right. What else I have here? Overcoming approval addiction will stop us from pulling, from pulling people in that God is pulling out. Overcoming approval addiction will stop us from pulling people in that God is pulling out and wondering why we got knives in the, in our back. He took the person out. You bring them back in. He taking them out. You trying to bring them back in. Wondering why you're going through all the hell. When he takes them out, when they walk away, let them go. Let them go. Because when you try, you go back and you bring them back. Here come war. <laughs> here comes the war. People pleasers will, su- will suffer abuse from people who they're trying to please. People pleasers will suffer abuse from people they're trying to please or assist. Approval addiction in our, in our, in our heart affects our identity. It impacts our increase in our intimacy. Okay. When we're addicted to approval, winning becomes a weapon, right? I'm going I'm to show them. I'm going I'm I'm to show them. You just out there trying to show everybody else. Like, no, that's not how it works. Anybody who is wounded while working is leaking. Anybody who is wounded while working is leaking. Good morning. Never allow their definition to make you think you're, you're deficient, okay? Sometimes people pleasing, sometimes people pleasing will cause you to disappoint others. Sometimes pleasing one will cause you to disappoint others. And it's okay to disappoint people, okay? Some people spend most of their time chasing people. Then Some people spend most of their time chasing people than, than they do chasing God. There's some people spend most of their time chasing people than they do chasing God, okay? Whoever you run to first is who you're, who's, whoever you run, whoever you run to first is who, who you're telling to show up first. When you have trouble, when you're going through something, who do you run to? Do you run to people? Who do you run to? <laughs> who do you run to first when you're in trouble? Do you run to Facebook or social media? Well, let me tell y'all what happened to me. Who do you run to first? Okay, because that's who you're telling to show up first. Wounded people are messy. 
fight for it, save for it, strategize for it. God said you, you, you are worried about, no, you, let me re rephrase that. <laughs> Approval addiction in the heart impacts our identity. For, for, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. That's Proverbs 23 and 7. Once you overcome approval addiction, you will know your identity. Once you overcome approval addiction, you will know your identity. Okay? Once you overcome approval addiction, you will know, you will know your identity. Our identity should be shaped by our creator, not by culture. Co culture. I don't know why I have a problem saying that word. <laughs> our identity should be shaped by our creator, not by our culture. The world don't shape our identity. They don't. They do not. Okay? So I just wanted to share that. That was fast too. I wanted to share that because I think a lot of times we self-sabotage in these areas of people pleasing, um, sacrificing, constant settling. It's like when you don't know who you are, we're constantly bringing other people in our lives trying to fit. And we all just trying to figure out, we're all trying to figure life out, period. And it's like, sometimes you have to just separate yourself. You have to, in healing when you're healed, when you are healing and you're doing your work, you have to do that in isolation. You literally have to just do that by yourself, right? You have to let him work on you, work through you. And a lot of times it's, it's when you don't know who you are, you're scared to be alone with yourself. At least that was my story. I was scared to be alone with myself because I didn't know who I was. So I, why would I want to be alone with me? <laughs> like that was scary to me, right? Until it wasn't. Like the pandemic changed my entire life because we had to just sit with ourselves, right? We had to sit alone with ourselves, <laughs> We had to take a hard look in the mirror at us. Okay? We had to look at ourselves because you can't fix anybody. You can't save anybody. You can't rescue anybody. That's not your job. Your job is not to fix people and save people and rescue people. That's not your job. Right? So I had to sit with me. And that was that was like, whew. I had to do my work. And when I say do my work, it's personal development. Right? I, po I shared a video and the guy was talking about, you know, you want to meet somebody who is doing, who is in the work, who is doing the work. And the question was, what's the work? The work is personal development, spiritual, emotionally, relationally, emotionally. You have to do your work, right? And once you do your work, you're, you, you'll be able to be in, in, in interactions and communication with other people. And you won't, you won't be offended at everything everybody says or does. <laughs> you won't. Once you know who you are, you know who you're not. And you know who you want in your life and who you don't want in your life. But you have to have, you have to do your work to know that, right? And that's why it's important to do the, the, the personal development. Because when you don't know you, you don't know what you want and you don't know what you don't want. And a lot of times we end up in relationships because this is not who we are. But we, we're trying to be what they want us to be because we don't know who we are. And then we constantly self-sabotage in these relationships because we're just trying to find ourselves. That's all we do. We, everybody's trying to find themselves, right? That's why you got to do that work before you get into that relationship or at least be in the work. That's what that means to be doing the work or in the work. Because when you, when you get in these relationships with somebody, you, they don't know who they are. Either they do know who they are. You don't know who you are. It's going to be constant conflict, constant conflict. Because was I, what I realized was when I began to heal, when I began to do my work, everybody began to look different to me. <laughs> Certain conversations, I just wasn't entertaining. Certain places, I just wasn't going. When I when I gained emotional intelligence and relational intelligence, the game changed. It changed. But you got to do your work. You got to do your work. You got to unlearn those things that are no longer productive for you. And you've got to replace them with, 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 with positive things that, that, are, that, that, are, that are aligned with where you're headed. First, you got to know who you are. Know what you want. Know what your goals are, right? Know what your non-negotiables are. What is not working in your life right now? Right? Make a list. What's not working? What am I going to do differently? Who do I need to become? Who, who do I, where do I see myself in the next couple, next couple years? What do I need to do to have that life? What do I need to give up? Because a lot of times we don't want to give up nothing. We want change without doing the work. We want somebody to give us all the answers to the test. Life is an open book test. It really is. But you got to you got to open the book. <laughs> you got to do your work. You got to do your work. It all starts with us. We can't change anybody. We can't fix anybody. You know how hard it was to change me? Imagine trying to do that to somebody else. 
who first of all don't want it, not ready for it, or don't want it from you. They're so they're they're like five different people that you can't help. Five types of people that you can't help. People that don't want to help, people that don't want the help from you, people that, that are not ready for that for, not ready for it. I forgot the other ones, but those are just a few that I could just think of off the top of my head. It all starts with us. It all starts with us. I made so many uncomfortable investments in myself. And I am so grateful and so glad for that. And this all started in the pandemic. When I was sitting by myself, I was like, this is not how I want my life to be. I don't want, I I want different. So what I got to do? And then God just started lining people up in my life, showing me what was possible for me. So I was like, let me hook my caboose to their train. Invested in myself, became a transformational results coach, right? Did personal, I mean, I'm in, I, I'm in monthly personal development groups. We meet weekly. I do the work. I schedule time. I schedule growth time. I schedule time to invest in myself. I read books. I take courses. I'm in school. I'm in grad school right now to be a counselor. Constantly doing my work. Nothing changes if nothing changes. It all starts with us. But first, you got to get to know you (laughs) and unpack those limiting beliefs, those lies. Unpack that mess, right? Pack in some good stuff, the truth, right? Things that are going to help you thrive, climb up that ladder and not decline, okay? Your circle. Your circle can be a cage or a circle of influence. Look, Look at the people around you, right? Because the people, birds of a feather flock together. So I want to be around people who I can learn something from. I want to be around people who are just going to, hey, you can do that. You can do it. You got it. I want people that are going to celebrate me and not and not be jealous of my growth. Right? you got to be around the right people. you got to find your community. Because it gets a little lonely when you try to do this thing by yourself. It's hard. You can't do it by yourself. We're not meant to do life by ourselves. We're just not. We're meant to be in community. We're meant to be in relationships. Relationships ship you someplace. <laughs> so it's important to get into the right relationships, the right friendships, right? The right circles. So grateful for my, my accountability tribe that I met during the pandemic. We're like four years strong. We meet every Monday. We hold each other accountable. We're there to support one another, no matter what we got going on. One of our members, uh, her brother, her brother um, got murdered. And we had a meeting on Monday. Our meeting on Monday was us just letting her talk, letting her cry, letting her just let this just have her emotions and be, and feeling comf- and feeling comfortable enough to sit with her in it. We weren't trying to fix her. We weren't trying to fix her. We couldn't do nothing. We couldn't do nothing with that. All we could do is be there, support her, just by listening to her and pouring it, pouring back into her. And that's what it's about. You want to be around people that that can that can be comfortable with you. When you are going through stuff, they help you. They support you. And man, listen, and we was like, after the call ended, we got back on again. In case you wanted to come back and share some more. In case you wanted to come and just cry. We was just sitting there, just holding space for her. It's so important to be around the right people who can be comfortable with your feelings. Because before, a long time ago, I wasn't comfortable with with other people's feelings because I wasn't comfortable with mine. I was told when I cry, don't cry. Why are you crying? Suck it up. Don't cry. Right? So then I became an adult thinking I couldn't cry. This, that's, that was <laughs> unhealthy. Tears are liquid prayers. Sometimes all you can do is cry. You have nothing to say. All you have is tears. And your tears are safe. They're safe with me. Because <laughs> first of all, I'm safe with me. And safe people create safe environments for other people. Healed people help other people heal. Okay, it all starts with us. It's yes, it is vital to be around the right people. You're right, it is vital. And in that moment, it's like we don't have to say anything. We want to just sit here with you and be in this and just and just and just love on you, whatever that looks like, pour into you and let you know that it's okay to cry, it's okay to grieve, it's okay to experience all of those emotions, right? We gotta let those emotions out. We have to let them out, and it's okay to let them out. Don't let anybody tell you, don't cry, don't do this, and don't do that. They're saying that because they're not comfortable with that. All people do sometimes is project their own stuff onto you. And that ain't just stuff to carry. <laughs> you, bet. You, you, got, you already got your own stuff. <laughs> you don't need anybody else giving you nothing, nothing else. I promise you, you don't. And so 
I just love the environment that I'm in. I love the community that I'm in. And I am I am the friend that I want, right? you be like, I want a good friend. I want an amazing friend. I want people I can trust. I want people I can talk to. Be that person first. Be that person first. It all starts with us. It all starts with us. And community, community, community matters. Yeah, we have tears for a reason. There's sometimes... I could be watching something or, he, or listening to something and I just cry. And I'm just like, what am I so sad about? And I just check in with myself. I don't stuff it down. I don't, I'm trying not to cry. I'm sorry for crying. I don't apologize for my tears. I don't stuff my tears down. I let them out <laughs> whenever they want to come out. If I'm in church and I'm listening to the sermon and I, or I'm listening to somebody's testimony and I get emotional, guess what? I let them come out. <laughs> and I don't care what people think or say about it. I don't care what they think, think about it. Because what's, what's, what's in has to come out. It does. And sometimes the body just, it feels things that you may have forgotten or packed down or covered up or just ignored. Right? But I'm telling you, once you hear it, once you feel it, it just releases. Tears are releasing things that you've been holding on to that you don't, that you may not be conscious of. And they're okay. It's okay to cry. It's okay to have emotions. Don't let them drive. Don't let them make decisions. That's important. But it's okay to have them and release them. Right? So I I have created a community. And it's called the Healing Women Support Support Group. And we meet on once a month. Right? And I'm coming there. No agenda. Whatever you got to unpack. Whatever you want to share. Share it in this safe environment. Okay? I'm a safe person. This is a safe space. And it is safe for you to share what's on your heart, right? Because I'm telling you, once you let that stuff out, you begin to heal. This is why I show up constantly. This is why I'm always sharing constantly. Because I'm not, we're not meant to hold these things and keep them. They're not for us. The things that we go through, the things that we experience, it's bigger than us. You can heal. You can't, we have, we have to be, we have to be conscious of the words that we're saying. Because the words that we say become the house that we live in. I can heal. I can heal. Right? Address what's, what, what part of me is, is hurting right now. Journal about that. And men can journal too. Okay? Journal about what am I feeling? Why am I feeling this? When did I first feel this? When, I, when did I first felt this? I lost my mom and brother within two years and it hurt so bad. Grief, grief, grief is something that it comes in waves. It's like you never really get over it. You can think about something and then think about the person and then you just start feeling sad all over again. And that's what I was um, in that moment with my with my account with my friend. Her she lost she lost her brother and she was just you know going. She was crying. She was grieving. Right. She was going through the process. It's a process, and it's no time frame on it. It's no time frame. It's like you're gonna feel what you feel, and and all of those feelings are okay. I miss them and I'm so much, I feel, yes, God is all, God is with you and they're with you in spirit, right? Think about the memories. Think about the time that you had together. Maybe go to the favorite place you like to go to. Maybe listen to their favorite song that that thing that they love to do. And that's how you keep their memory alive in you, right? So I would, I would suggest that. And maybe just, just write a letter, write, write journal about how you're feeling, right? That's what I would say. But it's a process. I'm really trying to. And, and then, you know, me listening to her talk and share her feelings and everything. I can see her being a grief coach, like on the other side of this, because the way she was expressing herself. I don't see people do that. I don't see people just talk and, and just open up the way she was opening up and be, to be able to have that. That and that 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 to be able to be in that space with all this stuff going on, just just to see that it's like you can help somebody else. Cause that, that that was always the area that I was just I wasn't comfortable with. Cause I never knew what to say. Like I want to, you know, you want to help people and and be there for them. And it's like, well, sometimes all you can do is just sit and just listen. That's all I can do because I don't know what to say. And the fact that she was pro, like we literally saw her processing everything, and I could see her down the future after she, you know, after the after she get whenever she gets to that 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 place, I can see her helping somebody else. Because the way that she was processing this thing and talking about it and sharing what she was feeling and going through. And I know that she'll be able to help somebody else. 
I know that she'll be able to help somebody else. I think the things I know the, the the painful things that we go through are not just for us. Once we make it to the other side, we're able to come back and help somebody else. That's why I'm always talking about relationships because relationships were my biggest pain. That's my biggest pain. And it wasn't with other people. It was with me. I didn't know I was me. So I kept, I was in a toxic cycle of abusive relationships. Most importantly with myself, right? Because people are only going to do what you allow them to do. People will only do what you allow them to do. And we pick these people. We, we, pick, we, pick, we pick these people to be, in, to be in relationships with, right? So what part of me was attracted to this person? I can't check in with me. I can't fix nobody else. The things we go through and the things we go through and heal is example to help someone here on earth. Yes, listen, I went through that stuff so I can help somebody else. Daddy wasn't there growing up, rejection, rebe- abandonment issues. The reason why I share from this place is because I was there too. I, you can't teach what you haven't learned, right? You can't teach what you haven't learned. But once you learn that thing, you're able to come back and help somebody else. Look. I was making bad choices. I was, you know, I was just promiscuous. I was looking for love in all the wrong places. That wasn't working. I began to work on myself because I was, I found myself in a cycle and the cycle doesn't change until you change, right? It all starts with us. So once I began to do my work, I began to know who I, who I am and who I'm not. And I began to love who I saw in the mirror. I am fine with, by, with being alone with me. I am comfortable with being alone with me. But I had to go through all those things in order to get to this, 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 this place. In life, we are going to experience pain. The pain can be a prison or the pain can be a passport. It's all up to us. And if he brought you to it, he'll bring you through it. <laughs> if he brought you to it, he'll bring you through it. Hey, sis. Yes, the biggest enemy was the inner me. You're right, Dawn. The biggest enemy was the inner me. It was me. It wasn't nobody else. It was me. I was at war with me. I was at war with myself. I was sab- I was sabotage relationships because I didn't know who I was. I thought I had to be what everybody else wanted me to be. I was a people pleaser. People pleaser. What you need me to do? Who you need me to be? Where you need me to go? What you need me to do? Even if I don't have it, I'll find it to give it to you to make you happy. To make you like me. Right? That was me. We got two different types of people pleasers, right? We have the insecure people pleaser. That's the one that just want to be liked. And we have the forced people pleaser, the one that don't want to be talked about. That was me. Yes. Listen, I'm trying to tell you, I tra- I'm, I'm, I am a, I'm a language police. <laughs> the things that people say, stop saying that. I'm broke. I ain't got no money. Nothing never work out for me. Well, it won't. It won't if you're constantly saying those things. <laughs> Life and death is in the power of your tongue. Watch what you're saying. You need to be saying, I'm a millionaire. Where my, where's my million dollar bill? I'm a millionaire. I can't find it right now. Ooh, I'm a millionaire. I'm just waiting on the money to hit my account. I'm abundant. I'm prosperous. I'm healed. I'm whole. I'm complete. Like speak those things into life. Not all the negative stuff. <laughs> calling yourself names and calling and, and calling yourself bees. Like, no, like who does? They'll call yourself a bee. That is just crazy to me. I don't do that. And I don't, I don't like when people do it either. I can't control them. But I'm like, come on now. We just, we just beat ourselves down. And then get mad when somebody else joins us. Makes no sense. I can go on, I can go on, I can go on a, a, a tangent about that, but I won't. <laughs> like, we have, got, we have got to start speaking life and positivity in each other's lives. And most importantly, ourselves. Because we, we, be, we can talk so crazy to ourselves. You so stupid. You so dumb. Like, why are you doing that? Why? Why would you talk to yourself like that? And then you allow other people to talk to you like that because you talking to you like that. Or you get mad. It's either it's either it's either or. Or you get mad with somebody else talking to you like that. When you talk to yourself worse. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. Anyway, that's just something that I was aware of. Um, I kept saying certain things and wonder why I kept seeing those things. <laughs> We got to motivate ourselves. Yes, we have to motivate ourselves and others. It all starts with us. Have a good day. Praying for you, brother. 
It all starts with us. It all starts with us. You are the change. It all starts with you. You can't fix anybody. You're welcome. You can't fix anybody. You can't save anybody. That ain't your job. (laughs) It ain't your job to be everything to everybody else and nothing to yourself. That was my phrase of the day. It is not your job to be everything to everybody else and nothing to yourself. It all starts with us. You can't help anybody else unless you first help you. You can't take care of anybody else unless you first take care of you. Right? When you're on the plane, what do they tell you? Do they tell you to take that oxygen mask and put it on your passenger? Or your mama or your sister or your brother? No, they say put that oxygen mask on you. In case of emergencies, in case of whatever, put the oxygen mask on you. Not nobody else. That's why we have to take care of ourselves. Put yourself at the front of your own line. And they get whatever you have left. If there's any left. If there's not enough left, that's okay too. God had to work on me and myself and the same things hit and the same things hit different. He gave me a different way to look at things. And I can only control me and how I react. That's it. That's it. You can only control you and how you react or respond. It all starts with me. It all starts with me. He wants us to be like him. We're created in his image. We're to love each other and help one another. Our purpose, our purpose on earth is to help somebody else. Literally, it's to help somebody else. <laughs> it is to help somebody else. You help somebody else and somebody helps you. It just, it just, it's just how it, it's just how it works. It's, it's what I believe. Anyway, if you're interested, ladies, are there any ladies who are interested in joining my, my support group? We meet on Saturdays at four o'clock and you just share what's on your heart. Whatever you're going through, it's a safe space to just share and release those things for you can heal. And I really want to implement, I really want us to start doing, reading some, reading a book as well. And then talking about the book also, because I'm reading a book called the, the Mountain That's You by Brianna Wyatt. And it is so good. The book is like, I'm literally healing. I'm literally learning things about myself when it comes to self-sabotage, because self-sabotage is something that we all do consciously or unconsciously. And I think the book will be very helpful for the group of women. And it just helps you see you, right? It helps you see your blind spots. And that's so important. It's so important for us to do our work. It's so important for us to get the help that we need. It's so important for us to invest in ourselves. The best investment you'll make is in you. The most important investment you'll make is in you. I'm telling you, your life will become unrecognizable because mine's did. Okay, I'll send you the link. I thought I sent you the link for the group. It's a private group on Facebook. Don, I'll send you the link. I used to give everyone a break, grace, understanding. But when, but with myself, I used to push myself hard and burn out. Yes, like just listen, people pleasing, and just just trying to help everybody else and, and save everybody else. And it's like when it comes to you, you ain't got nothing left in the tank, right? We gotta be mindful of that. <laughs> we gotta be mindful to make sure that we, 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 we keep this. What's in here for me? What, what's in here is for me. Anything that flows out of that is for everybody else, right? And once your cup starts getting low, you got to go where you got to go get poured into. You got to go love on you, whatever that looks like for you, okay? That's what I do. Whenever my cup starts getting low, let me go listen to a word. Let me go listen to some, um, um, let me go invest in myself. Let me go do some personal development. Let me listen to the, the stuff that I've, uh, that I've already, um, that I'm already um, invested in. I have lifetime membership. I have access to all this information. Let me go over here and get get poured into. It's very important. Love you, sis. Stay safe and blessings to you. (laughs) Y'all have an amazing Saturday on purpose. Stay in peace and not pieces. And I'll see you next Saturday on a a live. I don't know what I'm going to be talking about. Whatever speaks to me most. If there's a topic that you want me to uh, to talk about, and I am um, I have the wisdom and knowledge, and I will definitely talk about that also. And anyway, 